In this video, we'll be proving Cantor's theorem in Cog. We start off by reviewing the definition of surjective in Cog. A function f from type x to y is surjective if for every y of type y, there exists an x of type x, so that f of x equals y. Given this definition of surjective, we can state Cantor's theorem as, given a type x, there does not exist a function f from x to x to prop, such that f is surjective. Now to prove Cantor's theorem, we'll start off by assuming we have a function f and an assumption a that f is surjective. Now in order to use this assumption a that f is surjective, we need to find an appropriate function g from x to prop. Let's use the cock tactic pose to locally define a function g to be lambda x, not fxx. This is sometimes called the anti-diagonal of f. Now since a applied to g is a proof of an existential, we can use the destruct tactic on a g to obtain an element x of type x and an assumption b that fx equals g. Now we can use the cock assert tactic to assert a proposition which we will then prove and which we can later use. So we'll say assert c colon gx is equivalent to fxx. Now this c will be the name of the assumption after we've proven this proposition. We can use the curly braces to structure the proof script and make it clear which part of the proof script is a proof of the assert. In this case, it's very easy to prove the assert. We can simply rewrite with the equation b, and then the claim we need to prove is gx is equivalent to gx, which is trivial by reflexivity of equivalence, and we can use the cock tactic tato to prove this. Now, after we've finished the proof of the assert, we have a new assumption. It's the assumption gx is equivalent to fxx. If we unfold the definition of g in this assumption c, using the cock unfold tactic, then we see that the assumption c is simply not fxx is equivalent to fxx. False tautologically follows from such an assumption, so we can use the cock tactic tauto to finish the proof. So clearly the most important part of this proof is the appropriate choice of g. And the choice of g was given by this diagonalization idea, where we take f, apply it to the same argument twice, so we have fxx, and then we anti-diagonalize by taking the negation. And then under the assumption that there's some x which f maps to this g, we get a contradiction. 